What's up guys, what's going on? Max Brown here, back for another breakdown. Today's video, we are moving on from the college ranks, on to the NFL ranks, looking at Jalen Hurts. You might be asking, why Hurts, why now? Wanted to make this video because at the end of the regular season, around the holidays, much of the football world was talking about the Eagles quarterback position, and that talk's only going to heat up here after the Super Bowl. Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts, what's going on with the Eagles, what's Doug Peterson doing, all of those things. So I wanted to dive into the tape, see what's really going on with Jalen Hurts is behind center. Where is he having success? Where is he still struggling? Because I know to me, I didn't think that Jalen Hurts would successfully make the jump to the NFL. He's done some good things. I've been pleasantly surprised. But in this video, we'll look at the four areas I like about his game, but then two areas of concern and pretty big areas of concern when you start to look forward towards his outlook in his sophomore, second, third year campaigns in the NFL. Before I dive in, if you like this video, been liking my content, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button as well, helps the channel get off the ground. I'm bringing football content weekly, and don't miss a video. All right, so after watching Jalen Hurts' rookie year, four areas I love about his game. The first one, love how he throws the fade ball. <laughs> throws it deep. <laughs> Blitz is coming, Hurts sees it, gets rid of it, it's caught! Airing it out this time, down the sideline, reaching out, outshot Jeffrey. From those throws right there, it's easy to see he's got a great grasp for touch. And it's not just the over-the-shoulder throws, it's also the back shoulder throws as well. And I think one reason he has success oftentimes with these fade throws is he's not forced to process a lot, right? He's getting the snap, he looks off the safety, and he's able to just go with his first read right away rather than having to survey the entire field. I think that's why when you turn on the film, his best throws are down the sideline, over-the-shoulder, back shoulder fade balls. He looks confident in the pocket and continues to be accurate with those type of throws. The second area I love about his game is his mobility. That brings into your thing the balancing act that he's in. Hurts going to keep it here. Tries to get to the edge and get a block. He'll do both. First down. Right now it's just to jumpstart your team. You just weren't doing anything. And with an offensive line that's not playing great, you know, you see what he can provide right there. Not left. Hurts pressure up the middle. Rolling. Looking, just going to run. He's got some space now. Hurts in field goal range, and now we'll go. That's Buda Baker here. Hurts, step it up. He can run for it, and he does. First down. Well, I know he probably hates when people say it. Jalen Hurts' mobility at this stage of his career is his biggest strength. Yes, Carson Wentz has some mobility to him, but he's not really breaking down guys, running guys over, juking guys, really being active in the zone read game. He can do a little bit, but that's certainly Jalen Hurts' strong suit. On third down, that's really where it, uh, where it kind of shows. The Eagles offensive line, not very good this year. We all know that. Big reason why Carson Wentz got benched. But when things break down on third down, Jalen Hurts' ability to get outside the pocket, make guys miss, is, uh, is something we obviously have to know. And I know for me, it's kind of crazy to look back. A year ago, there was legitimate NFL conversation that Jalen Hurts could switch positions and be a running back or be something else for an offensive scheme. The fact that a year later, he is now the Eagles starting quarterback and Carson Wentz, the former MVP not too long ago, is benched and we'll see what happens. Happens. Pretty crazy 180 right there. Credit Jalen Hurts. His legs on third down in the zone read schemes, getting his offense out of trouble, certainly a strong suit. The third part I love about Hurts' game is his ability to throw the rock with touch. Here comes five Cardinals. Hurts completes it. For Carolina and Dallas following their loss in Baltimore. Hurts. On first down, fires downfield, it's Deshaun Jackson, back of the lineup, missed the last seven games, and he will take it 81 yards, a somersault. They like to do level routes with the receivers. Third down and nine. There it is. Birch throws, first down. We talked about it with the fade throws on the sideline, but we can also see with the over routes across the middle in the slot, his ability to layer the football, it's a great sign for Eagles fans moving forward. A common criticism, especially with younger quarterbacks, is hey, they throw the ball one speed. Josh Allen's a quarterback that's front of mind for a lot of people. His rookie year was a lot of one-speed throws. You do not get that sense with Hurts at all. He's a guy that can layer the football, both with the fade throws, but out onto the field as well. And I like his ability to use touch. That last play we just showed is a great example of that. He's sitting on the left hash. These are my, uh, my wannabe hash marks right there. He's sitting on the left hash, and on third and nine, he's able to throw a deep, 
out route or flood concept to the field. It's an accurate throw, he's on time. This is a big league throw, and if you're looking at, hey, Hurts' his best throws of the season, you're coming back to here. These are the throws that you definitely want him to build on moving forward. And the fourth area I love about Jalen Hurts' game is how he plays off script. I somehow managed to lose the video file from when I filmed to when I edited, so having to refilm this portion. Let a guy catch a curl in that situation. Jalen Hurts having to go quick. Ball cuts free. Hurts picks it up and then throws and completes it. I didn't even catch it. Steelers about to back with a victory today to clinch the division. As Hurts stays on his feet and then fires downfield. It is. Empty back to him. Hurts stepping up. Fires downfield and it's contested, but somehow. From those plays, it's easy to see how comfortable Jalen Hurts is when things are uncomfortable and how he's almost at his best when things break down. When things break down and his instincts are able to take over, he's able to play off script, that's when he's able to truly utilize his athletic ability. All last season, a lot of his big chunk plays, explosive plays came when things broke down. And when someone says off script, that means it's not anything you would talk about in the QB meeting room. It's not anything you can coach. It's when everything breaks down and you just have to go be a recess football player. And that's where Jalen Hurts is great. I also love how he's able to step up in the pocket and keep his eyes downfield. That's a day one quarterback coaching point in elementary school is keep your eyes downfield. Well, Jalen Hurst does a great job of doing that. And not only does he do that, but he also is not afraid to pull the trigger. He's not gun shy at all. He's going to take a chance. He's going to allow his players to make plays. And that's certainly something to build on moving forward. But playing off script, it's something that's given him success early on, and it's something that's here to stay when you talk about Jalen Hurts. So those are the areas of his game that I like, but unfortunately there's two areas of his game that are glaring issues to me. And the first one is my man is missing reads. And obviously the sample size is not large, only a few games that he was in there, but the plays I'm about to outline are not overly complex, and they're reads that Hurts cannot miss if he wants to find success moving forward. I got three examples, let's check out the first one right here ends for the Eagles. Tenth play of the drive. Second and goal. Hurts under pressure. Rolling to his right. Stays on his feet. Down the sideline. Eagles. Tenth play of the drive. Second and goal. Hurts under pressure. Rolling to his right. Stays on his feet, down no. the sideline. So when we watch that play, a lot of football fans probably say, oh, Eagles offensive line, they suck. Hurts was forced to flush out. It's not on him. That's not the case. This is on Hurts. Drew it up here on the whiteboard. Formation-wise, it's a two-by-two two structure. Zach Ertz is right out here. They're trying to have him go man-on-man -man versus the corner. Dallas gives a very easy look. It's just man coverage. And I don't know exactly how this read is taught, but just know when football and know that they're trying to get Hertz out here. I'm assuming this is the first read. This is the second read, and they're trying to high-low this corner. High-low doesn't necessarily matter in man coverage. you got to kind of pick your guy and stick with it. And then it's one, two, and then three down to the back. Zach Ertz on this five-yard out, and keep in mind, the goal line is like right here. This is where the front pylon is. And right away, this five-yard out, Ertz is open. Get the ball out. Your first progression, this is where the ball should be. Rookie, he's late. It happens. Sure, you missed a read. But then the Y clears out a bunch of lane for his next progression, or I guess the third progression, on the back. This Y takes the strong safety away, and then the mic is forced, and I'll change pen color, the mic's forced to climb all over the top, expecting that the running back right here while he's angling out is trying to get to the flat, right? He's screaming over top, screaming over top, and then the back really replaces where Dallas Goddard was right there. And there's a huge vacancy in the middle. The free safety's coming down, but he's too late. That's gonna happen in the red zone. And so the point I'm trying to drive home is Hertz misses his first read. This running back is wide open and he's in the progression. And yes, he has a little bit of uh, pressure by his feet, but it's nothing substantial. Ball's gotta get out here. If it doesn't get out here, it's, he's gotta be able to find the back, especially in these pressure situations. This is not on the Eagles offense line. This play is on Jalen Hurts. Eagles must get to the 35. Hurts under pressure. Eagles must get to the 35. Hurts under pressure. Throws it away. All right, there. Once again, forced to throw the ball away. Easy to blame it on the offensive line. This is not the offensive line's fault. This is a big missed opportunity by Hurts. There's a lot of time left in this game. You're down by 10. 
It's third and three situational football. You have to convert on these downs. Like I said, third and three. Third down, it's a man coverage down, and that's exactly the look that they get. The Cowboys give them a pretty straightforward look. It's five guys on the last scrimmage, and they all come man coverage on the outside. The reason I circled the will in the corner is their body language and what they do dictates what should happen in this play. This will linebacker, he's gonna blitz the A gap right away. When that happens, Hertz has to know he's hot. This is right in front of him. This happens, this happens in high school, but this for sure happens in college. It's right in front of his eyes. The second that the middle is vacated, Hertz has to hit Alshon Jeffrey coming on the shallow from right to left. That's his hot answer. That is not a hard ask. I've seen Hertz do that before. He did it in college. He takes his eyes to the left, but should be able to feel this middle open up and get the ball to Alshon right away. Not only the will outside there, but I also think this corner, he actually may have messed up this coverage. He is in a zone posture. Everyone else is in a man posture. He is outside leverage. Staring at the quarterback in a zone posture, allowing this easy shallow to have no one there. Alshon Jeffrey is wide open. This ball should be on him right now. The reason that I'm really pounding this one home is because this is not a difficult ask. It's third and three. You're down by 10. You're playing a division rival. You're trying to win a quarterback job. Missing these reads can't happen because it's not that complex. Let's check out the third mystery I want to highlight. Big play here, third and five from the Dallas 48. Need to get to the 43 yard line for a first down. And play here, third and five from the Dallas 48. Need to get to the 43 yard line for a first down. And, and as I'm critical on these missed reads, I don't mean to just be a poo poo kind of hater type guy. No, I'm pointing these out because they're not hard. These are missed reads that you should not miss as a NFL quarterback. And this one is uh, it is certainly right in line with that. It's third and five. Once again, you're down, I believe it was 13 or 14 in the game at that point. You get third and five. The Cowboys give you an ideal picture. This is a very, very soft coverage. And I should uh, indicate that I can't see where these safeties are at. That's how deep they are in the TV copy. I literally cannot see where those guys are. I can only see nine guys in the picture. So at third and five, it's not like it's third and 15. Third and five, with that soft of coverage, you should be able to find an answer there. The Cowboys elect to only rush four. Miles Sanders, good job on you. You don't have protection responsibility. Now get out, give me an answer, especially when you get too high coverage and defense goes soft, right away as a quarterback, it should click something in your brain that says, hey, if things get too soft, I'm going right to my check down, pick up the first down and move on. That's what you'd like to see happen. Good concept right there, gives you some answers. Got a deep out route right here, you got a dig route right here, but at the end of the day, coverage gets soft and this edge rusher, defensive end gets flying up field. Jalen Hurts, good job on you, you step up and he's flushing out, going to his left, but Miles Sanders right here, he's getting out as well. You should step up, stick your foot in the ground, dink it down to your back right there, allow him to make some a miss, you only need five yards. Jalen Hurts doesn't do that. He keeps leaking out, keeps leaking out, and then rushes and runs out of bounds. And it looks as if, hey, maybe no one was open, but no, your running back's open right there. And I know that can be tough because he's, he's processing maybe a fun concept down here, maybe eyeing this dig route right here against too high. I don't mind that, but eventually there's gotta be a clock that goes off in your head that I gotta get the ball down to my back, especially when he's right in your vision. He's working towards him. It's not like he's working towards the right and has to come back down to his back. It's it's right in his vision, hit your back, move on, get your completion. So those mysteries we just looked at, that's one area of concern for me. And the second big area of concern is the lack of timed routes that Jalen Hurts and this play calling scheme has when he's at quarterback. If that was just gibberish right there, what I mean by that is for a guy like Tom Brady he and, and Drew Brees, those guys live and die on time routes, right? It's one, two, three, ball out. They're not hitching. They're getting the ball out of their hands. A lot of Jalen Hurts' production is he's hitching up or it's it's fade throws that are outside. It's not, I got an out route. I got to paint it on the outside shoulder. I got a post route. I got to paint it on his face mask. I have to be on time. Sure, you have to be on time with everything you do as a quarterback, but specifically the time routes, the out routes, the post routes, the dig and throwing it as the receiver's coming out of his break, you don't see a huge sample size of that. And when you compare that to the greats in the game, the Breeze, the Brady, the Russell Wilson, those guys live and die on time routes. So there's a few examples I wanna show you uh, of what I'm talking about. Let's check out an out route right here. Fire to the outside. 
Sean Corbett not. Fire to the outside, Corbett not. So right there, it's no one's fault. That isn't Jalen Hurts' fault. It's like he's doing anything bad. But I'll say this, that's a great example of a throw that the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL, they complete that ball. They find a way to speed up their feet, to maybe do it a little bit more accurate, to maybe get a little bit more muster on the ball, and they find a way to get that completion. The bottom 20 quarterbacks in the league, that's what happens right there. It's an incomplete pass, didn't work out for him. It's that was third and nine right there. They're forced to get off the field and their team doesn't keep moving. That to me, I guess, is in a glaring issue right there, but in terms of the progression that you want to see Hertz make, for him to really get to that next level, I mean, the standard is, I mean, Carson Wentz was an MVP not too long ago. If that's the standard, those are the type of throws and completions that he has to make. Speed up your feet, you know that out route's coming, get it out a little bit quicker, and that completion can happen. Now let's look at a comeback on the left sideline. And you see them all dropping back, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Smith, all the way back there as well. Third and 14. As Hurts can't find anyone. And you see them all dropping back. Jalen Hurts, Jalen Smith, all the way back there as well. Third and 14. As Hurts can't find anyone. Right there, that's not an advantageous situation for the quarterback. It's third and 20. The defense knows you're going to be running routes right around the sticks. But even with that said, Greg Ward runs a great comeback route. The quarterback is sitting there, sitting, waiting to jump in, and he still gets his hips turned. And Greg Ward is open on this play. If Hurts trusts his guys, takes a big three and a hitch or a quick five and a hitch and gets the ball out of his hand, Ward is open on this sideline. He doesn't. You can tell he kind of pre-played the play in his mind, said, uh, I'm going to drop back and I know the coverage is going to be soft and then I'm just going to run a little bit. He didn't need to pre-play in his mind. Greg Ward is open. This is a comeback. If he's on time and aligned with his footwork and gets the ball out of his hands, this very well could have been a completion. We've seen a 10-yard out. We've seen a comeback. And the third big timing route in football at any level is a timed post. Let's check it out right here. Man free. Empty backfield, Hurts on third down, fires to the end three. Empty backfield, Hurts on third down, fires to the end This would have been a big time throw if he made it, but still, a little bit of a missed opportunity. Mahomes, Rodgers, those guys are making this throw, and the reason I wanted to highlight this is it's a favorable look and a good little teaching tape right here. Ball's on the left hash. He's got a time post, it's in the red zone or the fringe red zone. This ball's gotta be on time. He knows the windows are gonna be tight. Spray release post, and he's going vertical. It's a favorable look because the corner is certainly outside leverage, and the free safety is on the opposite hash. There's a window right here that you can drive the football. I know he's got a little bit of pressure in his face, but if he planted that back foot in the ground and did a boxer's punch and drove this football right up the right hash, this free safety might come over and lay a lick on the receiver, but there is a window of opportunity, especially if you know you have favorable leverage pre-snap, to keep your eyes down the left hash, maybe try to get the free safety to just glance or stay stagnant just for a little bit, stay on that left hash just a little bit, and then drive this time post route right here. That's the next step he's gotta make. It's one thing to kind Kind of be the change of pace quarterback, utilize your legs, make some plays that, that get the fans excited. But these timing routes, you call a time post, you call a comeback, you call an out route. Those are the plays that offensive coordinators up in the booth are saying, we have to convert that. The playing off script's fun and all, but these are the type of plays, the bang bang plays, you've got to find a way to get completions there. So there you have it, there's my breakdown on Jalen Hurts. I love his ability to throw the fade ball. I love his mobility. I love his ability to, saying ability a lot, dang. Ability to, uh, to play off script, and I love the touch that he utilizes and his ability to layer the football. But to me, moving forward and getting out of, he's, he's rookie, oh, it's all good. Moving forward, two areas of concern for me are some of those missed reads we saw because they're not that hard to process. I saw him do it in college, would like to see him implement it in the NFL. Did it at times, but it has to be an every play type thing. And then the time routes, it's a nuanced thing. The average football fan might not necessarily fully process the importance importance of that, but I can't stress how big a deal that is in terms of moving forward at the NFL level. The ball's got to get out on time. It'll be interesting to see what happens this offseason with the Eagles. I'd expect Hurts to be their guy moving forward. Even more interesting to see what happens with Carson Wentz. But if you like this video, consider hitting the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button as well to not miss any more breakdowns. And I'll be back here soon with another breakdown. Thanks, guys.